He is a figure shrouded in the darkest depths of infamy, a name that invokes terror and revulsion. His reign as Rome's third emperor was a descent into an abyss of cruelty unparalleled in history. Caligula was known for his sadistic pleasures and unfathomable brutality. His rule was marked by a relentless pursuit of power, shown through acts of incest, murder, and unbridled tyranny. His insatiable thirst for domination knew no bounds, earning him the infamous title of the worst human in history, a haunting reminder of humanity's capacity for unspeakable evil. Caligula was born in 12 AD. He was given the name Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus to honor his well-known relative, Julius Caesar. When he was two or three years old, he joined his father, Germanicus, on military campaigns in the northern regions of Germania. His mother designed a tiny soldier's outfit for him to wear, aiming to delight the troops. It was during these campaigns that the soldiers gave him the nickname Caligula, meaning Little Boot. When he ascended to power in 37 AD, it marked a period of initial celebration. The people were filled with optimism, seeing Caligula's rise to power as the dawn of a promising era. At first, their optimism was validated, as the first seven months of his reign were hailed as a golden age of happiness and prosperity. He began his reign as a noble and moderate emperor, but his rule took a turn when he fell seriously ill. Following his recovery from the brain fever, he underwent a significant change, gained notoriety for his self-indulgence, cruelty, sadism, extravagance, and sexual perversion. His odd behavior started from his insecurity about being bald. He refused to let anyone look down on him and insisted that everyone around him shave their heads. But of course, these were just the beginning. Caligula escalated his demands, asserting his divinity and insisting on being worshipped. He went as far as commissioning temples in his honor and scattering statues of himself across the empire. Moreover, he demanded that people make animal sacrifices for him and address him as your divine majesty. He gained notoriety for his extravagant banquets, during which the young emperor engaged in sexual activities with his sisters while shocked guests watched and some were even compelled to offer themselves as prostitutes. His perversion reaches such extremes that he fathers a child with his own sister, but before birth, he orders her abdomen to be opened and the fetus removed, also proclaiming it as a semi-divine. Upon the death of his sister Drusilla, he decreed a period of mourning during which the Roman populace was forbidden from laughing, bathing, dining together as families, and engaging in street conversations. In a chilling display of power, he found amusement in shutting down the granaries, condemning the citizens to starvation. He made a habit of watching executions while he dined, deriving immense pleasure from witnessing individuals being tortured with specially designed instruments that forcibly removed nearly all the bones from their bodies while they were still alive. As a result of his extravagant spending depleting the state coffers, he devised grand schemes to refill them. He resorted to killing the wealthy and seizing their assets. Yet finding this insufficient, he turned to another method. He compelled the wives and daughters of Senate members and influential Romans to work in a large brothel he established. His hatred for the senators was so great that he would undress them, dress them like women, and make them dance, especially finding fat men very amusing. They were always his first choice for this. He would urinate into the food of the senators and feed them a person he had killed, revealing this repulsive act to them after the meal. He would burst into laughter upon witnessing the vomiting of the diners at the table. He forced families to watch as their children were executed, making the situation even more cruel by requiring the relatives of the victims to smile and cheer during the executions before meeting their own fate. Furthermore, he organized gatherings and parties where people were brutally killed, inviting their grieving loved ones to participate in the festivities and pretend to have a good time. He insisted on executions being conducted slowly, ensuring the victims experienced every bit of pain. He preferred starting with superficial cuts and abrasions, gradually moving to more severe torture methods, 
all the while keeping the victims alive to prolong their agony as much as possible. It was disturbingly enjoyable for him. Caligula's thirst for blood knew no bounds. He was responsible for ordering the executions of numerous political opponents, senators, and even members of his own family, including his father-in-law and his own son. He acted like a cruel serial killer, taking lives just because he enjoyed it, without any reason. Once during a set of arena games he hosted, he commanded his guards to hurl an entire section of the audience into the arena because he simply felt bored. He wanted to entertain himself by watching the wild beasts feast on the unfortunate victims. In addition, he opted to feed criminals to wild beasts when the cost of using cattle became too burdensome. As Caligula was still in his late twenties, concerns arose that his reign of tyranny might endure for many more years. As a conspiracy brewed among the people, a pivotal moment unfolded in 41 AD, revealing the emperor's mortality rather than divinity. This revelation came to light on January 24, when Praetorian Tribune Cassius Caria and other guardsmen confronted Caligula following a sporting event. Cassius, esteemed for his exceptional service as one of Germanicus's top officers, had known Caligula since childhood. Enduring years of Caligula's taunts about his perceived effeminacy, possibly linked to an injury to his genitalia, Cassius found himself in a position of duty where the emperor often assigned watchwords like Priapus, meaning erection, or Venus, a Roman term for a eunuch. When Cassius requested the watchword from the emperor, Caligula's response prompted him to strike the first blow. Without delay, the co-conspirators swiftly approached and fatally stabbed the emperor. He endured 30 stab wounds before being unceremoniously dumped into a shallow grave. Unfortunately, his wife and daughter also met a violent end, with his daughter's head being smashed against a wall. Despite ruling for less than four years, Caligula's impact was profound, instilling fear and instability throughout the Roman Empire. His tyrannical rule serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the dangers posed by unchecked authority and the enduring legacy of those who wield it without restraint.